but um, it's interesting you had to actually spell it out. Well, I didn't have to spell it out. I thought it was fair to because one of the councillors um, that actually is a, a very good councillor, uh, he really does go into bat for people. He put his concerns across uh, in one of the videos that he thought some of our filming was a bit unfair. So it was my video response to that, that actually it, we've only done these videos because of how the council's behaved and not altered. So that's why we've done what we've done. And then I thought, well, actually, let's really spell it out for them that if you don't want to be in our, our videos, you need to adjust your behaviour. So rule number one, which is why about the video that he wasn't so keen on, I think, was um, do not disrespect the public in any way, shape or form. Uh, and the vast majority of the council, I'm pleased to say, do get that. But there's just one or two. There's some officers that aren't great. And there is one or two councillors that don't seem to get that. So basically, the four, I gave them the five rules. And then after each one, said, if you do, you'll be in a video. Um, the second one was a pet hate of we've sat through umpteen meetings where they have said uh, we want to elicit behavioural change within the public so I basically said um, that that's not what you're here for um, you know we don't pay you for psychological manipulation and don't do it. Uh, so hang on, hang on let me just, 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 just go into what that actually means they want to elicit behavioural change. Mm, so they will do things that encourage a certain behaviour so for example is this like the, like the nudge unit that of central government sort of nudging us towards certain things, taking medical Yes, they, they don't want us to be in our cars, so they're putting in lots of bicycle lanes and they're basically right. not allowing you to drive your car at some point, that's one of the plans, through the town centre. So, mm. yeah, it's little things like that that really annoys people. Um, so yeah. This is the thing what they've done here, the <clears throat> you see... We're not in Cambridge or Oxford or anywhere that's traditionally had bikes anyway. Those places, why did those places have bikes? Because they're suited for them. I mean, even if you go to somewhere like um, Lincoln, the, there's bicycles there. Um, and I know Lincoln's got a windmill and a bit of a hill, but the rest of it around there is flat. And... They've always had bikes. They don't need to encourage people to have bikes. Why do they have them? Because it's easy to ride them. The bikes um, encourage themselves because the landscape encourages the use of bikes. The problem with our area is it's not really very um, flat. It's very, very hilly, so it's either uphill or downhill. And I think that Tour de France, having the Tour de France through and then the Tour de Archer was a bit of promo for trying to get people into bikes. Um People do ride bikes up and over the top of the Pennines and over to Sheffield, but it's very, very difficult. It's for the challenge, not for the leisure. Well, you know, you know, those type of people like a challenge, but, you know, our area has never been a bicycle area. And it also, because of the altitude, it gets quite cold in winter, snow, ice and wind. And our area is very, very windy anyway. I mean, our ancient site... It's a bit bleak because of the winds. I mean, I think the ancients um, understood the fact that there are strong currents, strong winds, and it's right in the centre of the island. It's almost like, you know, um, you've got strong forces blowing around you, strong wills maybe possibly, or strong intentions. Um, and now they're trying to force these bike lanes, but the thing is they made some bike lanes and then all the cars don't go on that road and they move to other roads and made the other areas noisy and then their answer will be probably to put more bike lanes there and then what it's doing is passing it around everywhere. Um, the, th the problem with the council is this. I used to be active at night time quite a lot um, out and about driving, just, you know, on the way to friends' houses or back on a weekend late or if I'm just going out, sit out, you know, if you go to a nice place in the countryside and... It, I, it, this is not even going back very far at all. It used to be dead at night time. Even the urban areas, even the city areas, even like, you know, just out of the city, around the edges of the city, there weren't very many cars around. Um, and now it's turning into a 24 hour um, culture. And I, I don't really want to point the finger, but a lot of them are foreign people working in, you know, this is what George Galloway was talking about, you know, they'll come to England and work and work for cheaper. But a lot of it's the immigration and so forth as well. I don't know how they're getting the driving licence in cars unless they've got a driving licence when they get here. I don't know how they get it over in those dinghy boats when they're um, swimming in the channel um, and so forth. But there, there's a hell of a lot of foreign people 
Um, and it's really, really noisy now. And th they're building in these areas where people don't want houses to be built in and they're bringing traffic into the area. And then what what they're actually doing is none of the... The, I, the worst thing out of it is that when you've got an area that, that votes for Labour, it's meant to be for the people and for the workers. And they vote for Labour because of they've always voted for Labour and their life is affiliated with Labour and the name of the party and the colours of the party and they've made the area into a industrial Labour area or some of the area to a certain extent and it's pushing further afield. And... The problem is that now Labour isn't about helping working class people, but it has to try and make out it is. And everyone's got a certain allegiance to the Coronation Street theme tune and the whole thing. It's all deeply psychologically ingrained in. And that's what she was just talking about. She was just talking about they want to affect people's behaviour. Well, they've been doing that through Coronation Street for time and memorial and through the movies and so forth. And the problem is that um, these houses at the building, none of these um, Labour voters really, I don't think that they're buying them. Um, it, 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 it's a Keir Starmer kind of like, he's wanting to create a new elite class. And this the designs of the houses that they're putting through and getting built are all kind of, they're all very big, but still squashed together in a way that they're big houses that are, are, are still grouped and squashed together with quite depressing um, views, really. Some of them have been put in an amazing countryside places, but instead of giving them all a nice view looking out over the countryside, they're all kind of faced together. It's in a nice area, but the houses aren't too nice. They're spacious, but not nice. Um... And they're making a hell of a lot of money out of selling these houses. It isn't actually improving the area. It's actually changing the appearance and style of the area, which is against the law. You're not meant to do that. So they're ignoring quite a lot of directives for approval of planning. And they're not letting people object properly. All the people who object, they're disregarding those objections and not having any value to them. It's all been forced through. Um, and... That they're actually creating a lot of these new streets and roads. It's really weird. Some of them have got like um, electric gate to get into the street, so they can actually close off and shut off their street, like Brookside Close or something, but like a little bit smaller than Brookside Close. Bigger houses, but smaller area. Um, in this, you know, Brookside Close has got quite a big turning circle in it, but you know, like kind of bigger, fancier houses, but a little bit more squash grouped together, if you can imagine, huddled together a bit more. Um, and they've got it's almost like they're building Norman um, castles, Norman fortresses, um, and they've all got security gates, ID entry. Well, I don't know what they're planning that for. Why would they be planning that? Why would they be designing? Um, these fortress-style coded entry blockside closes to keep kids in in a beautiful area that is countryside when there's ponies and horses and a riding school. It don't make sense. In Los Angeles, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is talking about all of the main stores have closed down, like all the big fancy shops and stores that people used to come from around the world on holiday and to shop there. That's because Jeff Bezos at Amazon and that is because everyone just shops online now with a mobile smartphone. And if they order something they don't like it, they just send it back, get it sent back, you know, send it back and swap it for something else. It's all these. So they've got all these workmen, Amazon drivers, servants doing their bidding for them, almost like uh, Donald Trump's Donald, Donald Trump's caddy. You know, it's it, 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 the elite now don't. The elite used to like going shopping, you know, like all these pop stars, Noel Gallagher, Elton John, all these. The, when you were rich, you used to go to all the fancy stores. You like to go with your money and walk around and pick things up and look at them. Now, it, it, people haven't got time for that, and, and, they, and they don't want to hang around with the um, people, the scum, the workers, the um, lower classes. They want to be, you know you know, only want to be around their own circles or their own enclosures. And, the, you know, Elon Musk is saying everyone in LA is walking around like zombies. The house prices went up so much in Los Angeles. This is what, um, or San Francisco might have been, that 
well, both actually, that um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is talking about, that why was there so much homelessness there? Well, mainly because the climate's it accepts it, and if it wasn't that warm, it would force people off the streets. So the climate does, uh, but people haven't travelled there to be homeless. It's because they can't afford the house prices. But people aren't, um, so the actual people of the areas can't even afford to buy houses there. And because, you know, it's not too much of a hostile climate in temperature, they just end up going onto the streets. Um, all the shops are closing down. No one wants to hang around in those areas and streets because, of, you know, it gets dodgy and sketchy because of that. And they just saw so online shopping. They're, they're creating their own world, I think, their own reality. It's almost like a, a, a celebrity A-list. And unfortunately, a lot of these channels that, are actually meant to be opposing all this Black Rock Vanguard corporate industry takeover. They're kind of becoming deputized, celebritized, and, and getting sucked into the whole fame thing. And a lot of them are preaching. You know, Vobes himself is a, a huge preacher for, um, you know, opposing all those forces. But he, he is getting kind of... You know, a, a lot of these channels, you know, like Redacted and, you know, Joe Rogan, you know, even Brand, Russell Brand, um, you know, a lot of them are getting beamed up, like beamed up, Scotty, into the fame thing. And, you know, the problem is that it's almost like a hand reaching down, but hands reaching up at the same time, because when you've got the T, not everybody used to go into television studios, only a certain group of people used to go in and watch, you know, game shows, TV shows, actually go in there and mix with celebrities. Other people were just happy at home or going out with their friends. The thing with the emergence of, you know, Vobes, Neil Oliver, things like that, it's almost like a step down from heaven. You get in all these famous people, people who are becoming famous, and they're not quite... It's a step down from, you know... um you know, mega stars, and they're almost really, really connecting with people because they're talking about things that people really, really want and need, but not necessarily material things, not necessarily um, things you can buy, like, you know, the cars or golf clubs or membership of Donald Trump's golf course or fancy expensive meals or all these security cameras and so forth. They're actually, the connecting with, you know, the soul of people that's opposing all that, but still... We're all now kind of like, um, it, 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 we're all voices in the crowd, but one step closer to, you know, it, 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 I feel there's a desperation for communication. And I don't just mean replies on Facebook comments or replies under videos, like proper, proper communication. It's like, if you are just listening and just watching and you're like, okay, that's interesting, you know, and you, you enjoy watching it and it's informative and it's, you know, the, the step in the right direction of what, you know, you're interested in, like, you know, what Oliver, Neil Oliver's and, and Brand and Vobes seem to be um, promoting. But, you know, if you have, if there, there are things happening now that are really critically important and urgent, you know, uh, and, and being able to, respond um and, and your your response be acknowledged and even it's almost like the thing they've got this command of art they've got an audience basically and the audience is you know a group that really is the right group of people like you know the darwin oak petition has got hundred thousand signatures and so forth but the thing is these people are making progress they're making good progress and they're making the right progress in opposition to you know what's been forced on us, but there are there are some really um, niggly obstructions and obstacles in the way at the moment coming from the government and the corporate elite, and the removal of those obstructions and obstacles is key at the moment. And when you have something really important and you know that you know you know it's kind of almost like you know oh that you know this video of verbs is brilliant. I just wish that he'd mention this or just mention that or there's this key thing here that that we need to get people to help us with or do and 
it really could remove some of these obstructive things that have been done. And some of us are obstructing each other, not always on purpose, but it just ends up like that. Like 38 Degrees website, uh, they're meant to be on our side, but they're re being really obstructive and um, oppositional uh, and really against the law and really undermining the law. But then again, there's the Petitions Committee as well, local council authorities, you know, removing people's material that uh, have a right to oppose when they're meant to be impartial. Um, you know, like they're, they're taking down their material um, that people are putting up that's got a right to be there. Councils are taking it down when they're meant to be impartial. Um, certain investigations that have been done, rights, you know, protection from prosecution when we're bringing proper um, actions. There are a number of things, as claiming tax back, that no one's claiming the tax back for campaign material and promo stuff, really, because it, it, they're just dabbling in it, but that money would help, you know. They're not registered as a um, long-term organisation, but it's in the classification of that category, and you shouldn't be taxed on it, even if it's under a certain amount and you're not reporting it to the government. Um, you, you, could, you can do. You should be claiming it. Things like that, which can help with more promotion and stuff. Um, there, there are a number of issues at the moment when it comes to things that the government are doing wrong. And I know that, you know, anyone that you talk to is pulling things out that the government are doing wrong. I think that's the, the, the major issue. I mean, every single episode of this show is something or other that the government or the authorities are not doing right or are doing wrong, really. I think that is the problem, uh, or the corporate entities... I think that's what the, 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 the big picture of it is. Um, so the, this, you know, the, the changing of behaviour. Well, the thing is, the, when... The, yes, I've told them not to do that. So changing behaviour. The council, changing your behaviour also falls under election behaviour and voting behaviour, you know, as well. You know, getting you to ride bikes if you don't want to ride bikes, it's not only changing your opinion or vote on it, it's actually making you do it. And then if the council are doing it by force and, and sneaking the way to do it, they're trying to get you to coerce you to do something that you might vote against. But if they use these psychologists to get you to do it, it's actually it's, it's illegal. It's actually, just to cut the whole story, you know, to cut the whole thing short, what the council's doing is illegal. To propose to want to try and change people's behaviour and affect people's behaviour is beyond the scope of the council. They are elected to represent us. It's that it's us. We go to the surgery to see them, right? It, it, we tell them what we want done. It's not actually the other way around, and it's got completely con misconstrued. And this is why the whole corporations take over thing is wrong, you know. Um, so to say psych psychologically to get you to do something that they're wanting to do, um, like bike lanes and stuff like that, it's actually illegal. And like the blueprint of Huddersfield um, that they're doing here, um, they were promoting it and trying to get everyone to, um, you know, promo it. You know, they were using uh, it, it, influencer. It's, it is illegal. Uh, and even the mayor, who's meant to be the commissioner, the, the police commissioner as well, She's promoting herself in, like, you know, private businesses and she's wearing, like, labour colours and, and so forth. Um, it's almost like a little, you know, candidate book video. It's got nothing to do... If you're opening a sports centre that was paid for by the public, fair enough, but not private individual businesses when you're kind of um, promoting your political party and yourself, like Jacob Rees-Mogg um, on GB News uh, when he's not going to be on there and, you know, like Al uh, Alex Salmond um, with, you know, Ed Miliband in his top pocket and a Tory advert dissing the opposition, they pay money for that. They pay money to make their opposition look bad in their own political adverts. Um, and then, you know, it, it... So that psychological influence trying to get you to do certain things, that's the wrong direction of government a particular local government, it's it's the arrow is from us to them, not them to us, unless they're enforcing parking and so forth. Um, you know, or, you know, when they're doing maintenance and things or, or fines, upholding the law. But, but upholding the law is different to trying to change people's behaviour or bring things in that we might not be... Uh, the, the, the problem is that when you've got a strategic planning, where are the ideas coming from? The You know... And the problem is that a lot of the ideas are coming from companies and businesses, and 
we don't have money to propose things. These companies and businesses do because they've made all the money um, and we've got a right to object to it. But then, you know, when you start getting into Rishi Sunak and other people with shares and this whole, you know, MRI buff and not and Black Vanguard investors and all this, you've crossed the line. You've, you've crossed over into this, you know, people who are making decisions in government and councils, making profits out of it for themselves or their own investments. And that that was meant to be illegal. It, it is meant to be illegal. And it's another thing that they're blatantly ignoring, like, you know, Reese Mogg's not going to be on GB News. Uh, the petitions committee are blatantly lying about what you can and can't petition about and their standards. There are no standards, you know, that they're using the word standards um, misleadingly. You know, just look at some of the American uh, people um, going up in front of council and giving speeches. You know, they can't censor their speeches or the language at all. Um so you know the the, the it, it, it's they're obstructing that petition for stopping fifteen minute cities should have been um, up there, and the count the government should have found a way to do that. They should have thought up of a way to do that. Um, not say oh, we don't you know we, we don't know what you're asking. You know, it's nothing we can do. Well, cost it is you got to think of the way they're the ones who's, we're the ones who say what we want, what we order, and they're the ones who figure out which is the best way to do it. And there is a way to do everything um, that you ask for nationally. Um, so. We are being scammed by these people. We, we're being scammed. And I actually would go further to say that in this conversation earlier on, yes. they were talking about them only having a very, very short amount of time to speak. I don't think that you only are allowed to have a short time of to speak in the council because how can you present a case? It's not possible to present it. They're meant to book minutes and arrange minutes and they're supposed to accommodate for everyone and everything. And what they're doing is, it, it's another cup and ball trick. They craftily um, tailor the sessions so that they win and you lose or you're at a disadvantage. Um, and I've seen this in live court cases when they try and say that, you know, oh, you know, there's too many people pleading not guilty in court one, so you'll have to plead guilty in court two. You know, when you, know, like, you can't do that. I've got the right to plead whatever I want. You can't say it's too busy. You know, that th that's effectively what she's saying. They can't, they're trying to change the behaviour of people so they m change their plea. You know, that, and that's what the, she said the council are doing. These people are criminals. I know she said there's a few good people on the council and a few okay people and some not as good. But what what we need to understand is that some of these people are criminals. They've broken the law and the entire culture has become corrupted because their their advisors, their MPs, uh, the legal department and the whole co corporate... Um, Backers who are the ones who come in and put the plans on the table to build all the McDonald to, to build the old town for them, you know. Um, oh, it's you know, Elon Musk walks in, and, oh, I'll build three McDonald's, five KFCs, one uh, multi story car park, three swimming baths, and a new health center, you know. Um, or three, you know, who's gonna pay for all that? Well, me, -da -da, I'm gonna take you know, this is it. Um, and, you know, they're all members of the same political party and um, probably funding the same non-profits and so forth, um, scientific research on humans. You know, this is it. it. They are corrupt. What we actually need is criminal action against the Petitions Committee, Ministers of Parliament. 38 Degrees have been helping us all out and they're complaining about council removing stuff, but then they're removing our petitions unlawfully when, you know, it's a legal case, it's a live legal case, you know. Um, that they they've got us fighting against each other, as well, you know. And then the whole environmental thing. Why are there environmental problems? Because they pushed it and pushed it and pushed it with the um, ultra processed foods, and they put the pedal to the metal with the whole food uh, type of foods and made us all unhealthy. They maximise the pollution, and now we're having to pay for it by having all our freedoms taken away. When, you know, if they hadn't have um, flawed it before, you know, people would have a much more relaxed and, and steady life. And and you know, people have never had freedom to move and travel really because they've been, you know, the life that Vobes is kind of weaving when he's sat in his kitchen 
which is quite different to Black Belt Barrister with his, you know, motion detected outside, motion detected outside, motion detected outside with his state-of-the-art, you know, um, IKEA um, fancy flat um, or whatever he's got, house with, you know, you know, state-of-the-art holographic projector, you know, to Mark Zuckerberg's basement or whatever, and Nick Clegg or whatever, you know, is that it's not, you know, Vobes's folk kitchen, you know, his countryside cottage kitchen, where he's just happy with the simpler things and, and the peaceful life. Um, you know, it, it, it's, you know, got to be flashy, you know, show off for the ladies, a bit of muscle flexing, you know, muscle, you know, big, big, big um, arm wrestling moves um, with a lawyer's wig and so forth. You know, it's all flashy, you know, and... The, the downside of all that flashy showing off business is that you got to have more security gates because you piss people off. But why would you do that if it pissed people off? You know, why show off? You know, um, why not have modest things? You know, well, what do you like about having these fancy things? Oh, because I like this thing. I like this fancy car. I like that. But for who? Well, for myself. Or are you taking someone out for a ride? You know, taking people out in a Volkswagen camper to the beach? You know, all your best friends and buddies, you know? Well, why do you need motion detector outside, you know? Unless there's people coming around to complain. If you're a barrister, I suppose, there's a lot of people that, you know, may be not on your good side if you've put them all in prison. I don't know. But, um... Certainly, you know, m maybe barristers do need security. Um... But not, not hopefully not if they're good barristers. Um, not, I'm not trying to say that black, black barrister is not a good barrister, by the way. But that's just you know a bit of uh, entertainment value. But so you know, um, it, 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 it. I don't think that the thing with the life that Verbs is selling, the life that Verbs is advocating through his channel and programs, it, it really what it is. It is the kind of, um, it, it, it's the peaceful sort of um, engaged life that really um, we should have had, it, we were never allowed to have, but the Tories stole that for themselves and they've had that the whole time and that's even not enough for them and they've always wanted more. But we've been the ones who have been paying the price for it and we've been the ones who have been suffering for their affluent lifestyles uh, and so forth. But they were, they, they're always on to the next thing, you know. Uh, and we never get to have kind of that, you know, we never get that because they're always spoiling it. Because firstly, they've got us all doing their bidding all the time, uh, and then they're building the, the, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. What it actually is, is keeping us, keeping a handle on us, you know, and, and the life that Verbs is proposing is a life without someone with their, you know, thumb on you all the time um, to, to, to do their, the, you know, the next thing, the next best thing, or the next distraction, or the next, you know, Irishi Sunak, he wants the, you know, shuttle ship even though, you know, the planes are polluting everywhere. You know, Sunak and Musk, they want the flying car. Sunak and Musk want, you know, they want us to have the flying car. Then they want, you know, the turbo train. Then they want the, you know, space holidays. Then they want the holographic, you know, um, you know, light up roof of the universe. Because they've stolen all the, all the real um, shooting stars and so forth um, and to make your eyes better at night so you can see better because of all the light pollution in the city. No one can see the stars or sky anymore, so you've got to have a fake one in your room. It, it, um, it, it, and then the next thing, you know, the laser disc and the CD and the cassette and the, you know, it, so, and then they get bored of it. They're getting, they're going through so many devices and novel technologies now, but they're discarding them as quickly as they're making them. They're never satisfied. And, and it, it, the whole time, we're the ones who are locked in this eternal service doing it for them, and they're trying to sell it to us, like chasing a carrot on a stick, go on the game show, win the money, then you can also have it as well, when, when they're having it the whole time, you know? And we'll, we'll never... They've had more, not only, you know, what Verbs, you know, paints a picture as the ideal, you know, the ideal, um, you know, chiller's lifestyle, even if you went to, you know, parties on a weekend, it doesn't have to be rave parties or, you know, um, O2 Arena. It, it could just be, you know, folk festival like Jeremy Corbyn likes to go to all his, um, you know, events and so forth. It could be Bloody Murray stances or there's not really, you know, an event's an event. 
doesn't matter what style it is. But at the end of the day, we don't really get to enjoy being alive on the planet with not bad things that are quite nice because they're always... It's like a dodgy car salesman. And it's, it, it, it's the latest amazing thing. But it's, it might as well be dodgy or defective or, or... Because it is. Because the thing with the whole ultra-processed food, the whole McDonald's, KFC, it's all state-of-the-art. You know, you can say, well, that's not like a dodgy car. Well, the thing is, it wasn't healthy and it, it's not really good for us. And so it, the thing is that, you know, it's designed, it's got the nice box and the nice graphics. That's not dodgy. You know, well, it's not dodgy graphics. You know, McDonald's logo's not um, like a crap. Um, clip art well maybe it is you know and the burgers you know all the state of the art seats in there it's all smooth and you know um, technological uh, touch screen menus what's what is the used car salesman part of it is that you don't really need it and we shouldn't really want it and it hasn't been good for us that's the thing it might be new it might be novel and it might be uh, uh, you know um, but it, it, it's it's still, you know, it's almost like, you know, <clears throat> the firework display, you know, so I right to watch it, but what use is it at the end of the day? It might even be of, of, of no use. And I don't know what it is with Starmer and Sanak and all these people in government. They're chasing this, what's the urgency? They're telling us to slow down to 20 mile an hour zones, you know, like all around Wales, but they've got this urge. It's the urge. It's the urge of Musk that he asked to get the neural link yesterday and he asked to get us into space and he asked to get all these things for this critical human major evolutionary point. But, it, it, you know, it's not for me. It's for, it's for Rishi. There's one thing about these people that reveals everything and that is that they claim, you know, one minute Rishi Sunak's giving out bacon sandwiches for homeless people, or I have to do a bit of charity work to look charitable, but if he really was, if his priorities were the people, they're not. His priorities are in his wife's business profits and so forth. All what we're doing, those, those businesses are for the people. Those profits are making widgets and space rockets and, you know, railway um, lines and, you know, next generation, God knows what. So it's for all for you. It, all it's for everyone. Well, if you, if you can afford it, Rishi, no, it's for free. Is it for us? Well, no, it, it's for you if you want to buy it. If you can afford to buy it, well, no one in LA can afford to buy an house, Rishi. They're all homeless. Um, you know, they don't need any, you um, know, they're going to freeze to death, you know, riding the bike into LA, you know, um, in an icy, stormy, uh, windy, um, Pennine uh, winter, you know, with a completely useless bike lane, you know, uh, is LA, you know, they've been riding bikes since the 1950s, Rishi, you know, it's how it's keeping nice and warm and flat, you know, um, their, their interests are in the numbers, you know how you know how much in you know how, how you know the bigger the number in the bank account, the higher their interest in their self and you know what they want to do for for them really. It's not for us. If it was for us, they'd be giving it away for free. You know, if the electricity was for us, then they'd be giving us it. If the water for were for us, they'd be giving it. The water is there to keep us alive, so we can continue making stuff for them and turn up for work. The water isn't there. You know, hey, I, 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 I have op I've opened a new waterworks. It, it runs for free. You know, non-profit. Oh, thank you, Rishi. You're so kind. That was for you. Well, you know, not none of it's for me. You know, well, not even any profits. No, it's non-profits. You know, I'm a generous man. You know, what's all these non-profits uh, donating? Oh, well, the non-profits, the non-profits so far Tory sponsorship. Um, yes, you know, um. This is it. It's not for us. If it was for us, then it will, we won't have to pay for it. It's not for us. It's to it, it's for them to make money out of and provide to, to keep us going just so we can carry on doing things for them, for what they want us to do for them and for things they want for us, which keep us, again, doing you know influence and affect us, like the council have said. So, you know... Um, 
you know, it's clearly obvious where those people's interests lie in themselves, in their own profits, you know, uh, unless it comes to non-profits and they can evade some tax and do some secret research and then fund their political parties, you know. Um, you know, if the, you, you know, I wish Rishi Sunak was as eager for his, you know, charitable non-profits as he was for providing water, you know. Um, it's a miracle they've got non-profits, other than the fact is that the only, only, only well, what's profiting out of them are their political parties. Who's, who's profiting out of the non-profits? Who, secret research labs going on, popping pills, you know. Um, it seems that they're benefiting from the, you know, top secret research they're doing in their non-profits, and um, their political parties are benefiting from the non-profits because they can't even reveal where the money's coming from. So, you know... Um, I wish that they were as eager um, to provide non-profit water, non-profit electricity and non-profit travel uh, as they were to provide non-profit research for their own scientific advancement and their own political party funding. So we know where their interests lie with themselves and their own progress, their own sociopathy, their own continued power and control. That's where the interests lie and that's why everyone's pissed off and not happy. And that's why, you know, oh, um, bing bong announcement. If anyone in this bus station is making you feel uncomfortable, please report them to an attendant or to the police. You know, we will arrest them with the new laws. Don't look at someone with your left eye. Don't look at someone with your right eye. Don't look at anyone sideways. Don't look at anyone, you know, don't say the word and or if. Don't use any consonants or vowels in this bus station. If you use any consonants or vowels in this bus station, you will be told to leave and be charged a fine of six pounds. You know, oh, can I come out with a haiku? You know, can I come out with a joke? No, no, you know, if you make any jokes against anyone in this bus station, it will be 54 pounds fine. If anyone makes you feel uncomfortable, well, well you know, well, whoop do you do We're building some houses next to your house and ruining the pony field. Oh, oh, the, the, the stress, the distress, the torment, the ripping out of the soul forever. Not just, you know, for the six months of beep, 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 beep. You know, be all right if it's Keir Starmer in court. Every beep is, uh, you know, a £50 compensation. Beep, 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 beep. There's a £500. Beep, beep. Keir Starmer, I'm getting upset. I'm getting distressed. If anybody in this bus station makes you feel uncomfortable, beep, 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 beep. Oh, beep, 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 beep. You know, you'll be making a fortune, you know. Um... This is the thing, uh, insane laws, ooh, it's anti-Semitism, you know, it's, it's anti-community, anti, anti-view, I can't see the mountain or the trees now, you know, you just plunked a garage in front of my house, I wake up, you know, it's like big country, it's almost like some sort of musical, you know, the girls watching these Disney films like Mary Poppins and the hills are alive with the sound of music, I open my curtain, in my, uh, you know, my working class council terrace house on my steps and look across at the forest. It's gone now. Council approved building of new houses, £10,000 profit, you know, uh, no, million, a million pound profit, you know, I'm on a three million pound profit, you know, someone's making some money out of it, you know. Uh, but it's just causing me a bit distracted. Where's my nice uh, view of the valley gone? You know, it's, it's right upset me that. Um, yeah, it just upset me. It's actually ruined my entire life. I have to move away because of it. You know, never mind moving away because you've got annoying neighbours moving away because they ruined the neighbourhood. Oh, is there a new law for that one, Care? Is there a new law coming out for that, Rishi? Ooh, anyone in this bus station makes you feel uncomfortable, calls you the P word, paparazzi. Ooh, don't call me a pack of paparazzi. Don't call me a buddha, a bud, hey bud, hey bud, hey bud. I'm sorry. Excuse me, that guy's calling me a buddha. He's 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 against my religion. He's calling me a bud, a bud. I'm not. I'm your friend. I mean friendly. No, officer, arrest him. He called me a Buddha. He's against my religion. Arrest him. Which is new laws. You make me feel uncomfortable. You know, so I don't say counsellor. 
Demolish the village, you know, demolish, demolish, build up, you know, tower blocks to the skies, bring the cars, drive the traffic through, meow, meow, it's 43 o'clock in the morning, meow, 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 is anything in this bus station making you feel the slightest bit uncomfortable, chairman of the council, meow, 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 there's a fucking plane coming over, there was this fucking early half past six in the morning. Beep, 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 beep. Can I complain against that to the council? No, it's not loud enough. It's not, it's not against the noise threshold. Beep, 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 beep. No, it's annoying me. Oh, tell, call the police. I'm sorry, I can't do anything, sir, but it's driving me insane. Where's a lawyer when you need one? Where's Keir Starmer? Starmer! Where's your new laws? Stop building that shit! I object! I object! I object! You don't have a reason! You know, there are no squirrels dying! Oh, but squirrels dying when I finished with it! Strangling the squirrels! Well, the squirrels are dying now! Is the reason to stop the noise! You know, this is it! This is the damn thing! You know, there's no intellectual activity going on! In the government, they're putting laws through. You can't look at people with your left eye closed. You can't look at people with your right eye closed. You can't say the words if, but, tuff, tit, with, or dick. Now you can't use consonants, you know. No, oh, don't use consonants against people. You might make them feel uncomfortable, you know. I open my window in the morning. I love my village and town. I couldn't be in anywhere nicer. What's that there? Beep, 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 beep. You know, this is it. Oh, it's, you can't. Any, you know, if anything makes you feel uncomfortable in this bus station, except a workman with a pneumatic drill in the side of your head, you know. Oh, you know, it's so oh, sorry. This is all official. It's all been approved, you know. Well, can you approve my insults then, sir? I deputise myself for the power of the people invested in me, you know, and go around the nine people, you know, and go, I'll get myself a pneumatic drill. You know, what's more annoying, Rishi? Someone calling you a paparazzi? Or um, having a pneumatic drill in the side of your head in the bus station? Yeah, have some of this, you know, go report this to the policeman. It's after half past seven in the morning. <laughs> you know, um, I think all the comedians in the country should um, get new jobs. You know, approve some building work on the stage. Uh, you know, with a pneumatic drill. You know, ah, you know, I can't, I can't do any jokes about squirrels today. I'm sorry, it's illegal now, but I can get a pneumatic drill out and demolish the building as long as it's after half past seven in the morning. This is the thing. There's no logic, and the reason is that Rishi needs to build. He like he needs to we to build, build, build profits, profits, money. Profits, Rosebank, more building, I need to make more money, I need to make more money, I need a wee, I need to make more money. You know, where's my, I, Mark Zuckerberg, I want my metaverse, I want my new goggles, I want my new Gucci hat, I need my new jacket, I need my new crocodile shoes. This is it. You know, the urgency, urgency, urgency. I need to get into space. I need to get into space. You know, the, the urgency. But people have never had the life that Verbs is painting a picture of and selling. He, uh, he, he, Cam, David Cameron, you know, we, because we have been made, we are only in existence to serve them so they can have the um, picture-perfect life. And, and still... Then they've had the picture of perfect life all through the 16, 17, 1800s, and now they're into the future. The whole time, the whole way through, coasting along. You know, not only that, with the servants on top of it, you know, um, with Alfred in the kitchen, they've had it and more. They haven't just had the verbs perfect lifestyle, they've had that and more, triple, quadruple. And we've had to suffer for it. They're not content. It's always more. And now it's mega more. 
Now it's Megamo. The only thing that needs to be made criminal is profits. Where are the non... If only they were as enthusiastic of non-profits for the people rather than non-profits for their own scientific research and funding their own political parties. Oh, if it's for their political party, that's different. Oh, yes, let's get some donations in the box. Well, if only the electricity company was doing that. Oh, non-profit electricity. Let's have some donations coming down the electricity cable into my political party headquarters central in my front room. Look at this. Now we're charged... Now we're charged, free water, free electricity. Now we're charged, you know, now we're cooking. It's a conservative pie headquarters. Non-profits are flowing in through the windpipes. This is it. These private schoolboys need a new paradigm in life. They need the shock into them to change their ways. This is the problem.